today I will be showing you how to flash any model of Raspberry Pi with Raspberry Pi OS. Now while I'm only using official Raspberry Pi devices in this video, this should apply to clones as well. Along with this video I've put together a web page on my new website called spencersdesk.com. There you can find any links and all the information you need to get your Raspberry Pi flashed. So first I want to talk about what do we actually mean when we say flash a Raspberry Pi. Really all we're doing is getting a bunch of boot files onto this small SD card, or in some cases of different Raspberry Pi models or different clone models, we are trying to get those same files onto the internal storage that lives on certain Raspberry Pi models boards. The methods of getting those files onto these two different medium are pretty different. So that is the first step in figuring out how to flash your Raspberry Pi is to determine which method you're going to need to use. Now, most Raspberry Pis, like the Raspberry Pi 4, Raspberry Pi 3, the Raspberry Pi 0, they all are just going to need an SD card flashed. So you'll put all the files on this SD card, and then you will insert this onto the actual Raspberry Pi board, and then when we power on the board, it boots up and it receives all those files, and our operating system is built. Now where things get interesting is when we have compute modules. They come in a lot of different flavors. So for instance, this one has no Wi-Fi and no eMMC, and this one has both Wi-Fi and eMMC. eMMC is basically just a flash drive that lives on the compute module, and that is what holds all of our files in our operating system. So if you have a compute module, you will just need to determine if you have eMMC or not. If you have a compute module that does not have eMMC on board, then you are just going to need to flash the micro SD card like every other Raspberry Pi. If you do have eMMC on your compute module, things will be a little more complicated, but we'll get into that. So let's start with the SD card method first because it's super straightforward. So we're just going to need a micro SD card and then a way to insert that into our computer. Sometimes micro SD cards come with these full size SD cards that are just adapters and you can slot in the micro SD and then slot this into your computer if you have an SD card slot, but if like my computer you do not have that, you'll need something like this SD card adapter. You just slot it in there and then plug the USB into your computer and you're good to go. So once you have your SD card reading set up, you'll just need to skip to the flashing portion of this video. Now if you're trying to flash a compute module with eMMC, we're going to need a couple extra things. First you'll need your compute module and then you'll need some sort of I.O. board. In this case I have the official Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 I.O. board. This is just a board that the Compute Module sits on, and then we can connect to it. There are some other options as well, like this 3D printer control board from Big Tree Tech, which has headers for a CM4 to live on. Now, depending on which I.O. board you decide to go with, there will be one step that is a little different between the two boards. You're also going to need a 12 volt power supply if you are using the Raspberry Pi Compute Board or whatever power supply your printer control board needs. Finally, you're going to need some sort of USB cable. Here I have a USB micro to USB-C. The USB micro is for the I.O. boards, which works for both the official board and the control board I have. And then the USB-C is just for my desktop computer. And then the very last thing you need is a couple of pin jumpers that we can put onto our I.O. board to short certain pins together. So I'm going to start by mounting the compute module onto the board, ensuring that it is in the correct orientation. And I'll just push down on it and it will snap in. Next, I will just fit a jumper where it says fit jumper to disable eMMC boot. What that does is it disables booting from the eMMC on the board when we power on the IO board. And that allows us to write new files to the eMMC. Now, when it came to my printer control board, I read the manual and it said that I had to jump the headers in two different locations, and then also flip a switch to be in CM4 mode. So I flip that, and it's good. So if I wanted to, I could flash my CM4 with this printer control board, but for this video I will be using the IO control board, as the methods from here on out don't vary at all. The next step is that we are going to take our USB cable, we are going to plug it into our board and then we'll plug the other end into our computer. Once we have it plugged into our computer, we will connect up our power supply to our I.O. board. Okay, so now that we have our compute module board connected to our PC and connected to power, we need to install a piece of software that will allow our computer to interface with the eMMC on the board. So to install RPI boot, 
can go to the web page I put together and we can scroll down to the installing RPI boot section. For Windows, I'm just going to click this link and it will either start downloading immediately for you or it will take you here. And I'm just going to download the raw file. So this is a RPI boot setup.exe. This is just an installer. So we will click download. We're go we will go to our downloads and we will activate the installer. We'll say yes, we want it to make changes. We'll just go next, I agree, next, install. It'll install a few drivers, but then once it's done, um, we should be able to run it and we will be able to discover our IO board as a USB mass storage device. All right, once all the drivers are installed, we can just hit next and finish. Now we should just be able to search through Windows, click this and it will run our Pi boot. So we can see it's running. And it ran successfully and now we can see the EMMC has been found as this boot FS D drive. So now we can move on to the flashing section of the video. So either you've plugged in your micro SD card or you've gotten your compute module set up with RPI boot, we are now going to flash the Raspberry Pi. So here on the web page, I've got a link to the Raspberry Pi imager from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Click that link and it will take us to the Raspberry Pi uh, web page. And then here they have download links for the Raspberry Pi imager for your different operating system. So I'll just be using for Windows. So I can download that, go to my downloads, and run the installer. Just run through the setup wizard, I accept the agreement, and it should install pretty quick. It's not a very large program, so I will just click finish and it will launch the Raspberry Pi imager. All right, so here we are in the Raspberry Pi imager. So the first thing we are going to do is select our Raspberry Pi device. So you click choose device, and you can see a lot of the different models will pop up here. So I will just select Raspberry Pi 4 because this contains the compute module 4. So I'll click that. I'll click choose operating system. So this will vary depending on what you're trying to do. If you're just trying to flash your Pi to use as a desktop, you will use this Raspberry Pi OS. What I'm going to do is install a light version of Raspberry Pi. So I will go to this other section and I will install Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit. This is like 0.3-ish gigabytes compared to the 1.1 gigabytes of the full install. It just lacks a bunch of packages and doesn't have like a desktop environment. I'm going to install that, so that's what I'll choose, but you choose whatever you feel like. And then the final thing we'll do is choose our storage device that we are trying to flash. So if you have an SD card, then you'll choose that one. Right now I have RPI boot running showing EMMC storage as a mass storage device. So I'm going to select that. So I'm going to hit next, and then it is going to prompt me if I want to apply some custom OS settings. So I'm going to click edit settings. And here you can set a bunch of stuff up, which is very handy. First is the host name. This is basically the name of your machine. So there is a default and it will just show up as Raspberry. But say I want to do something like run a 3D printer with my Pi, I will say my 3D printer. Now for username and password, the default is Pi with the password being Raspberry. So you can leave it like that. Or you can change the username to something like Steve with the password, of course, Minecraft. You can configure your wireless LAN. So if you want to connect your Pi to the internet, you can check this. You can enter my SSID, so the name of your wireless network, and then you can type in the password. And then we can select our actual wireless country. So I will type the US because I'm in the US. And then you can set local settings, like your time zone and your keyboard layout. The next big one I would enable is SSH. This allows you to, from another desktop, across your network, connect into the Pi and work on it remotely without having to hook up peripherals or a monitor to your Raspberry Pi. Finally, the options are play sound when finished, eject media, and enable telemetry. Telemetry just lets Raspberry Pi Foundation how you use the imager. It's anonymous and whatnot, so if you're not comfortable with it, just disable that, but I'm fine with it, so I leave it enabled. 
then I will click Save. And then I will say, yes, I want to apply these custom OS settings to this OS. So I'll say, yes, all existing data will be erased. Are you sure? Be sure you're flashing the right storage device. I'd probably recommend removing other storage devices from your computer so that there's no risk of flashing over the wrong one. So I will say, yes, I want to continue. And it will prepare to write. If you, Windows does this to you, just cancel. It doesn't matter. And then it will write to either your EMMC or to your SD card. Once it's done writing, it will then go back through and it will verify the writing portion. All right, it looks like everything was successful. It wrote and verified the OS that it flashed. And now we can just hit continue. And it should auto eject our either SD card or our EMMC drive from the computer. And now we can just close out storage and go and get our Pi. So I removed the IO board from power, and now I just removed that jumper. And now when I power it back on, we have a functioning Raspberry Pi. Now, if you were using the SD card method, you will just pull the SD card out of your computer, insert it into your Pi, and then power on your Pi, and you'll be ready to go. Now that you've got your Raspberry Pi flashed, you're gonna need a cool project to work on. So check out this video where I show you how I control all of my 3D printers with a Raspberry Pi. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you.